Hello my lovelies, welcome to my channel and thank you so much for watching this video. If you find it helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel. You can also click on the notification bell if you'd like to be notified when I next upload a video. Many thanks and I hope you enjoy this video. Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel, thank you for joining me today. Um, I have decided to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do a playlist um, of Madame Glam colours from their 2019 and 2020 advent calendars. Um, so if you've watched my last couple of many videos, you'll have seen, I think, about five or six colours from that collection. Um, and I was thinking the other night, I'm like, oh, what am I going to do with my nails this week? And I thought, I always gravitate towards my favourite colours. And I thought, no, nah, I'm going to get out of my, um, yeah, my zone. And make sure I use each colour in both of these collections because why not? That's why I got them. So what I've done is I've created myself a little list of the numbers. Um, these are all numbers of gel polish colours. You'll see some are missing because they might either be a base coat or a top coat um, or a poly gel or something like that. So these are the actual gel polish colours and the ones I've crossed out are the ones that you've already seen. So I've used them in my last two manis. Um, so what I'm going to do is use at least one new colour for each money that I do until I've gone through all of the colours in both of these advent calendars. Um, so it's just going to be a random selection. I'm going to tick them off as I use them. So you'll see at least um, every colour at least once. Um, you might see some colours multiple times because they just go with everything like, you know, stardust or shimmer white or something like that. But there will be at least one new colour for um, for each money that I do until I've gone through all of them. Um, so random selection this week. Uh, let's start with 16. From the 2019 um, and that's here it's quite exciting it's like getting the advent calendar all over again um, and here we have hip 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 oh, let's have a look okay so this is what we are going to be starting with this week um, now I'm gonna go away and find things to match it with now as you can probably see <laughs> I had a bit of a nail catastrophe during the week. Um, broke a nail. I knew it was going to happen. My nails were getting too long um, and I needed to cut them down, but I hadn't had time. So um, nature helped me and I managed to cut one down. Um, of course, right now by the nail bed. So that meant all of them um, are now short. So we're going to do nail um, short nail designs, um, obviously up until the point that they grow out. And we're going to start with hip, hip, hip. So I'm going to go and find things to match up with this and I'll be back. So this is what we ended up with um, from our Manny today with the colours that were chosen. Um, so to show you everything that you need in order to do this. Um, so we're going to start with, we started with our Hip Hip Hip, which was our colour that we chose, um, or randomly selected I should say, um, from the Madame Gam Advent Calendar. And I paired that up with... Um, Five seven seven three eight. This is um, an Elite 99 colour. It's actually a colour changing polish, um, which is why it's looking quite pink um, in the bottle and a lot paler on my nail. So this is it cold from the bottle. It's a dark pink and as it warms up it goes to a paler pink and it's got a, um, a glitter within it. Just a, a, a pale light glitter, small Fine glitter, that's what I was looking for, fine glitter. Um, we've also got Luminaries Top Coat in Power. Um, I used this nail um, resin to apply the crystals to my nails. Um, so the nail sugar is done with these two colours. These are from eBay. Honestly, couldn't tell you what brand they are. Um, a typical sort of no brand um, eBay glitters. Um, and I've got some Swarovski crystals. These ones are light Colorado topaz, which is these ones, um, and rose, which is the pink. You'll also need a few um, containers and things. So you need something that's um, either, yeah, basically a little throwaway tub, because um, you'll want something to put some glue in and some top coat. You'll want something to catch the excess glitter when you do your nail sugar, so that you can um, put your unused glitter back in your pot. Uh, this is my isopropyl alcohol, which I always have on hand. This is my cleanup brush, um, my detailer brush. Um, you'll need one of these to apply your top coat around your crystals. Um, my orange wood stick that I just use to clean up around the cuticle area. Um, you'll need something to pick up your crystals with as well. Um, this is a nice little tool because you can pick up your crystals with this end and move them around your nail with this end. Um, and this is actually, this is optional, um, 
I use this to apply the glue to my nails where I want my crystals to be. You don't need to use one of these, but I do find it makes it easier um, to limit the amount of glue that you put on your nail. You don't need a huge amount of glue um, when you apply crystals to your nails. So I find this quite helpful. Um, you could equally use a toothpick um, or something. Obviously, you're not too worried about getting glue on. Um, and obviously, your lamp, as with any other gel um, polish money. Um, so this is what we ended up with. As I mentioned earlier, I did break a nail basically right back um, to my nail bed. Um, so these are the shortest nails I've had for a while. But I just wanted to show you, you know, you can still, short nails doesn't mean they can't be blingy nails. Um, obviously, I've got some crystals, I've got some loose glitter, so, you know, there's still a bit of bling. Don't let um, length dictate what you do. So there you go. Um, anyway, let's get into how I did this. So on our little finger, we are going to apply our first coat of Hip Hip Hip, um, that Madame Glan colour, which was our random selection for this week's money. This polish uh, has a very has a very thin consistency to it, um, and it's not very opaque. So you'll see um, as I do my nails, I actually start to apply the polish a little bit differently. Normally, I just sort of apply the polish um, as I am in this um, in this section. But then you'll see as I tip my finger up, you can see the sort of blank sections of colour um, because the polish is so thin. Um, so you'll see I just start to manoeuvre it around the nail um, a bit more like you would with a like a builder gel sort of thing. So there's always different ways to um, apply your gel polish depending on the consistency of the polish that you're using. This one's particularly thin so I just start um, moving it around the nail. Um, equally you could have just left it streaky and then done you know one or two more layers than what I did um, but I wanted to do this in two coats so I just moved it around the nail. So on the middle finger, we are going for this colour shifting polish from Elite 99. This is number 5738. And this is actually one of the first um, gel polishes I bought. I have had this for years. Um, so kudos to Elite 99 because I've had this polish forever. Um, and it hasn't thickened up. It hasn't gone goopy. It has it, It's just been great. Um, so this is a good polish, but you'll see as I go through it changes color when it comes out of the lamp now here what you can see is just a different way of capping the free edge and it's a very effective way to do it on short nails um, so this is the nail that I broke and it's the shortest even though I cut all of them back it's still the shortest one I've got um, and so turning your brush around and just sort of literally pushing um, the polish over the edge of your nail caps your free edge um, and is also much neater. It means you're not you're less likely to get polish on the tip of your finger. So it's a good tip for um, capping your free edge on short nails. And the index finger is also going to have that hip 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 colour. Um, and I think with this one, I spend a fair bit more time um, manoeuvring the colour around my nail because I was finding it quite streaky. Um, I mean, having said that, it is you know it is an easy polish to work with. It is nice and thin consistency. I just found that I needed to move the the pigments around a bit more on the nail. Um, and there you can see me capping the free edge that um, alternative way. So today's video I'm doing slightly differently. This is the first time I've actually done a voiceover on my videos. Normally I do the voice as I'm actually doing my nails. Um, but to be honest, I'm not a very good multitasker and I found that I was either concentrating on what I was saying or what I was doing. Um, and so something was kind of, yeah, a couple of times I made a few mistakes. So what I thought I'd do is just concentrate on doing my nails and then doing the voiceover afterwards. Um, so please let me know in the comments whether you think it works well or whether you think I should revert to just doing the voiceover um, as I'm doing my nails. So yeah, here we go. You can just see I'm manoeuvring um, that colour around the nail a little bit again. Um, and then, yeah, as you do it, because gel polish does self-level, um, you can just leave it for a second or two and then it will self-level before putting it in the lamp for 30 seconds.
And you'll see I quite often use an orange wood stick um, or my cleanup brush around the cuticle. Sometimes I need to, sometimes I just do it out of habit more than anything, I think. Okay, so that's had its 30 seconds cured in the lamp and we are now coming in with our second coat. Um, the second coat is always quicker um, than the first because basically you're following the, the lines that you've set yourself in your first coat um, and it's more about evening out that colour than anything, giving it a bit more opacity. I also don't tend to cap the free edge um, on both of my colour coats, so I'll cap it on one or the other. Uh, sometimes I do it on my first coat, sometimes I do it on my second, but um, I don't usually cap it on both. Um, and that's just really to try and keep um, the polish at the tip of my nails that little bit thinner, that's all. Um, usually one coat's enough just to cap that, um, the very tip of your free edge, so um, I just leave it at the one coat. So you can see there that pink, um, as it's come out of the lamp, has gone quite pale um, and that's the colour shift because it went in the lamp, it came out hot, went in cold and, and came out hot. So you'll see the difference in colour in a second as I go to put on my second layer. <laughs> there we go, there's the darker pink. So I'm going to finish off my second coat um, and then these will go back in the lamp for another 30 second cure. Um, both of these brands, the Pink, which is the Elite 99, um, and the Hip Hip Hip, which is Madame Glam, they're both 30 second cure. Um, and because neither are particularly opaque colours or highly pigmented colours, then I'll leave them for 30 seconds. So what I'm doing here is I'm just clearing off that sticky layer with some IPA or isopropyl alcohol um, and that's just because we are about to apply some crystals. So if you apply crystals with your gel polish then this step is unnecessary. Um, you would want to keep your tacky layer on but because I'm applying mine with glue um, or a nail resin um, which is the Mere Secrets resin um, then I remove that tacky layer. So here I'm just removing <laughs> moving cat fur from my uh, my glue bottle and I'm just putting some glue on the bottom of a um, disposable container um, because basically what I do is I put a little bit in a container and then I use um, this mascara brush um, to apply it and it just enables you to apply the glue in um, in a thinner in a thinner layer and enables you to place it a bit more easily where you want it on the nail. You can use the brush that comes with the glue. Um, I just find it a bit more difficult to regulate the amount of glue that I'm using. So basically what you would want to do is put the glue on your nails where you want your crystals to be and then apply the crystal on top. Now I think if I remember correctly I removed this crystal because I found it was a little bit too big. Um, so here you can see that I'm checking the sides of the crystal um, and I decided there was too big a gap at the side of the crystal. Um, so I ended up applying a smaller crystal. So um, in order to keep your crystals on for longer basically what you want to do is absolutely minimise the amount of um, empty space around that crystal on your nail because this is my little finger. Um, my nail bed's not that big and I found that the centre of the crystal was um, was centred fine but there was quite an edge around the crystal which means it would have been very easy to catch on things um, and come off my nail basically. Um, so I changed it for a smaller crystal which you can see here and then I've applied two smaller crystals on either side and that also helps prevent the larger crystals from being knocked off your nail um, because again you're closing off part of that gap around the nail. So you know that might catch at the top or the bottom of my nail but it's not going to catch on the side um, where those smaller crystals are located. Okay, so I was happy with the placement on um, on that finger. So now we're moving on to my index finger. So once again, just picking up some of that glue um, and placing it where I want my crystal to be. 
and depending on what type of glue you use and certainly if you use um, gel polish to apply your crystals um, depends on how much time you've got to play around with your crystals so obviously with gel polish you've got as much time as you want until you cure that polish um, with the glue you have less time because obviously the glue will eventually set but depending on the type of glue um, this one doesn't dry particularly quickly um, so you have got time to maneuver, you know, move your crystal around your nail, which you can see me doing here with the, the metal end of my crystal picker upper. <laughs> no idea what the technical term is, but that's just what I call it. Um, and then on this one, I decided to put a smaller crystal um, just moving down the nail. So, you know, if you've got um, shorter nails, don't let that stop you from, you know, still doing a bit of nail art and bling and things like that. Um, some things do tend to look better and work easier on longer nails. Um, so I tend to find I use things like striping tape when my nails are a bit longer or um, the more detailed um, nail stamps as well look good on longer nails. Um, but you can see here I've used some crystals um, and still, you know, different colours and things. So. Yeah, don't be afraid to, to bling up your nails just because they're short. So that was putting the rose crystals onto the hip 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 polish. So now we're going to put the light Colorado topaz um, onto that pink gel polish. So I was trying to choose colours basically that complemented the gel polishes that I was using um, and given that I only used the two colours this week, as you know I quite often use more than that, um, but I only had the two colours so I went with the, the crystals I had in both, in both of those colours. Went out of camera shot there for a second, sorry about that. Just, um, yeah, just moving my crystals into place. Just trying to get them centred on the nail and I tend to find the best way is to actually have your um, your finger facing you, sort of front on view. If you try and do it um, looking over the top of your nails, I think because my fingers aren't that straight, <laughs> they end up being a little bit wonky. Um, so here we're putting some top coat into our um, disposable dish. Now this is probably the most important part of applying crystals um, to your nails. The top coat is absolutely key. Um, do not rush this step, spend as much time as you need. Um, so the two main points here, I think, A, take as much time as you need, it's really important. Um, and secondly, um, don't skimp on your top coat. You need to be quite generous with your top coat around the crystals. Um, so hopefully you can see here, it's, um, it's a bit hard to tell, but I'm taking a dollop of top coat onto my detail brush. And it's quite a big dollop, I'm literally pillowing that um, top coat around my crystals because what I'm trying to do is get some of that top coat underneath the edge of those crystals so where the crystals aren't sitting dead flat on my nail um, I'm trying to get some top coat in there and that will do a couple of things it fills that gap so it makes it less likely that you are going to catch um, your crystal on something you know a drawer um, it could be anything really so it fills that gap um, and it also gives you a very nice smooth sort of transition from your nail to the crystal. There's not that ridge there. Um, so again, it's less likely that your crystal will, will come off. And here I'm just capping the free edge um, of the short nail just by pushing that top coat over the edge of the nail. Um, and yeah, just going straight up to those crystals. Um, so I'm sure you're probably aware, never top coat over your crystals. Um, obviously that would be the much easier thing to do, but it will damage the shine. So um, it's a bit of a waste of crystals, to be honest. You may as well just use sort of rhinestones if you're gonna do that. Um, so you want to keep the top of your crystals free from top coat, um, but you want the top coat butted up as much as possible around those crystals and supporting them. Um, and as some of that top coat wears off my brush, as you can see when I've got just a little bit left, um, I go around that very edge of my cuticle 
just so there's a little bit of top coat there, but I don't want to flood my cuticle, so I wait until most of the top coat has been um, moved in between the crystals and around the crystals. It's a bit hard to see on the video, um, but that is quite um, a big blob of top coat that I am just pillowing around around those crystals. So as I said, take your time. This is not something um, to do quickly. And here I'm just checking the angle just to make sure that the surrounding area of those crystals um, has top coat and I haven't got any gaps that can um, catch easily. So yeah, it is definitely something that you want to take your time with, with crystals. Um, it's not the quickest form of nail art to do, but you know, I mean, they're beautiful. Um, I love bling as you know, so. Um, yeah, I like to use my crystals. So that's just a couple of tips for you. Be generous with your top coat um, whilst not getting a top coat on top of your crystals um, and just make sure you take your time with it. Make sure that all that entire surrounding area of your crystals has got top coat. So here we're just top coating um, the last nail with crystals on it um, and hopefully you can see as well here again I'm sort of pillowing that top coat up to those crystals and then in between as well. So where that gap is between the, the larger crystal and the smaller one that's going to be um, top coated as well. So you really want a detail a brush, you want something that's got a very fine point for this. Um, it's very difficult to use um, the brush that comes with um, your top coat unless you've got like a mini bottle, you know, like some of the Madame Glam, they do the, the mini bottles, the ones that came in the advent calendar, for instance, um, they would be, they would work um, a lot better than the brush that I've got in my full, full size top coat. But ideally you want something like a detailer brush because that can literally get around the crystals, you know, between your crystals in your cuticle area. And then for the remainder of your nail, you can just use um, the brush that comes with your top coat. But as you can see, I'm still, I've still got quite a generous amount on there um, because I don't want to pull that top coat away from that smaller crystal. Um, and there I'm just capping my free edge. Okay, then I'll just go around the edge with my orange wood stick. Just make sure I haven't got any um, top coat that's pooling. And then that will go in the lamp for 60 seconds. So with um, my top coat, um, it is actually quite a runny top coat. So I do flash cure um, each finger as I've done it. It's also quite hot here at the moment. So um, yeah, gel polish is runnier than it would be if it was if the weather was a bit cooler. So here we're going in and we are going to do our nail sugar and I think I show you um, one finger of each hand. So here I'm actually painting with my non-dominant hand, hence it's that little bit slower um, and probably a little bit more focused. And as you can see the brush on my um, gel polish went a little bit sideways and a bit wonky as well so um, I'm working my way around that. So I always when I do a nail sugar I always put a layer of, a cor of colour of a corresponding colour underneath the glitter. It's not essential um, so yes it does take a bit more time um, and it's not essential but I just find it gives I think it gives that glitter a bit more body um, gives it a bit more oomph so I like I like to do that. So I'm just going to do one layer of colour, no need to do um, a second layer, but again because of the, the, free, the um, formula of this gel polish it is quite streaky so I do apologise as well, I'm a bit out of shot here um, because I am using my non-dominant hand, but I'm doing exactly what you saw me do earlier, um, which is just moving that colour around my nail, so to remove that streakiness and those patches of where there's no colour.
OK, and then that's going to go in the lamp for 30 seconds. And now we are going to go in with our top coat. Um, so this again, it's, it is quite a runny top coat, but it is a relatively thick top coat as well. Um, so here again, when you're doing nail sugar, you want um, quite a generous amount of top coat. Um, so either if you've got a thinner top coat, just float it so that you've got a slightly thicker layer. Because if you've got any gaps in your top coat, then you're not going to have any glitter there and you're going to have patchy looking glitter, which isn't going to look very good. Um, so you just want to make sure that you've you've got your nail fully covered um, with a decent layer of top coat. And then before you cure it, just literally tip over the glitter that you're using. Um, move your nail around so that you get the sides, um, the cuticle, the free edge and the whole lot. And then just tap off the excess of that. Now when you're doing nail sugar, because obviously you've got a lot of um, loose glitter over the top, of your top coat which has not yet been cured um, so I just go around the edge with my cuticle stick um, and then I pop my um, my finger into cure my nail into cure um, for a full cure so for this gel polish it's 60 seconds so cure it for 60 seconds bring your nail out and then remove the excess glitter with a nail brush um, because your glitter you know it's all your nails cured at this point um, you can use a brush and then I put it back in for a further 60 second cure and then you're all done so I'm just going to do the same on my other hand with the pink because I wanted to show you the pink that I used um, so it's the same yeah the same color um, elite 99 color changing polish um, and then we're going to put a layer of pink glitter over the top Sorry, I was struggling there a bit. Normally when I'm um, actually painting my nails, I've got my rest and I didn't have that because I had some glitter floating around the place. So I wasn't quite sure when my hand placement wasn't quite working out for me. <laughs> but never mind, we'll get there in the end. Um, and that's probably a little bit of a better shot actually to see how um, that free edge gets capped by turning your brush around. Um, and then you just, yeah, you don't get any on your skin. But just do another quick level like I'm doing there, um, just to make sure that it's not too bulbous on that on that free edge. But it's a good way to do it if you've got short nails. I've probably taken a bit more care there than I needed to, given that I'm about to color that up, um, cover that up with glitter. But anyway, here we go in with our top coat. Um, so just a layer of that, don't cure it um, and pour your glitter over the top um, and then it goes in your lamp. And I am capping the free edge here um, because we capped it with our colour as well. Um, and don't worry if you do get any glitter on the edge it's a bit scratchy, you can just gently file it off. Um, can't honestly remember if I've got a shot of me doing that or not. Um, but if I haven't, if you have got, you know, if your edges are quite sharp, um, then just take a file or a buffer or something, but just very lightly around the free edge. It won't take very much. You're just taking that rough edge off that glitter. Okay, just tapping off the excess, wiping around with a cuticle stick. And that's just to get any top coat that may have started to pull. And then into the lamp for 60 seconds. That's done. Brush off the excess. Yep, just check if there's any rough edges. Oh, there you go with my file. So yes, I'm just very lightly buffing as you can see. Um, just checking, that's a, um, a 240 buffer, so it's very gentle. Um, it, 